Welcome to this art lesson. Today we're going to be painting an advanced portrait. If you're new to painting or haven't drawn or painted a portrait before, this lesson may not be for you because it's definitely on the advanced side intended for intermediate to advanced painters. But with that being said, if you're up for a challenge, I say give this one a shot because this is a great intro to photorealistic portrait painting. And in my opinion, there's no better way to learn than to challenge yourself. So let's get into the supplies needed for this painting. First thing we're going to need is an airbrush. I'm using an Awada Custom Micron but you could use any kind you want from a $20 airbrush to a $500 airbrush. They'll all work just fine for this. The next thing we're going to need is a high quality paint. Now the kind I recommend is either Createx Illustration Colors or ComArt because these two both erase very well. The more important thing though is that a high quality paint has a finer grind to the pigment so it'll help it spray much better through an airbrush. Another good alternative is golden paint but you can't erase that. That's permanent once you put it down. The next thing we're going to need are some tools to remove the paint from the surface. So we're going to need ink erasers and X-Acto knives. My favorite two ink erasers are the Stadler Mars razor and the Faber Castell Perfection which is called the 7058B. And the last thing we need is a smooth non-absorbent surface. On this painting I'm using canvas with about 10 layers of gesso which is wet sanded down to a very smooth finish. I have a link down below in the video description showing you how to do this. You can also use that same technique on watercolor paper by applying multiple layers of gesso. This way it blocks any of the pigment from getting absorbed into the paper and leaves all the paint right on top of the surface so you can remove it. I'm also using some airbrush shields and uh, some vinyl tape for masking, but we'll talk about that as we get into the painting. So up on the screen right now is the photo reference used for this painting. I recommend pausing the video here and taking a screenshot of this to print out to use as your reference. Before starting this painting, you're going to need to transfer the outlines or the contours of this portrait onto your canvas. My favorite way to do this is to set up a grid. Down below in the video description, I have a link to a video I made that shows a brief history of the artist's grid and how to set one up. You can use that to transfer the contours right onto your canvas this way. Okay, so with all that being said, let's get right into this painting. So the first thing we're doing is starting with this left eye. What I'm doing is starting with the pupil and the iris. I'm using the small circle template to spray in the pupil here using a blue that I mixed with 10 drops cobalt blue and one or two drops of orange. So I'm using these shields to go around the outside of the iris just to start defining some of the shapes. I'm trying to keep everything light here and then I will add more paint as I go along to darken it up. Like obviously the pupil needs to be black but I can start with blue now just to map out the shape of it and when I feel that I'm happy with it and comfortable with where it is I can switch over to black to darken it up. I'm using the same color to darken the outside of the iris. This is called the limbus or the limbo ring which is not on everyone but it's a dark ring around the outside of the iris right before you get into the white of the eye which is called the sclera. Now that I have some paint down, I can use an eraser to pull out some highlights. Particularly, I'm trying to pull out the highlight on the upper left corner of the iris, which is a bright specular highlight. Since an airbrush atomizes and sprays paint, if I want a sharp edge, like on the outside of this iris here, I'm going to have to use a shield. I'm going to do the same thing around the specular highlight. I'm just using a ruler to help sharpen it and define the edges a bit more so that it doesn't look too soft. So to darken this pupil up, I'm spraying the same blue that we mixed. Um, the interesting thing about transparent colors is the more that you spray, the darker they're going to get. So you can usually mix a nice dark color and get a bunch of values just by the amount that you spray down. Switching back to my eraser, I'm looking at my reference and trying to pull out any of the highlights that I see within this iris. And what I like to do is cut a sharp edge on the razor so that when I pull these highlights out, I can pull out very thin, bright lines. Now I'm going to use some black that's thinned down with a few drops of distilled water and darken the edges of the iris and darken up the pupil. I'm also going to use to start building up the values around the outside of the eye where the eyelashes are. I'm using my airbrush shield for the very beginning of this just to get a sharp line underneath this top eyelid. And then for the rest of it, since it's pretty soft, I'm just going to spray this freehand. I'm using some of this diluted black to darken the sclera, which are the white parts of the eyes. Now remember, the eye is a sphere. It's a rounded shape. So just like any other rounded shape, if the light's coming from the front, the brightest part is going to be right in the middle and then it's going to darken around the edges. So I'm just spraying a little bit of black along these edges to help give the eye that rounded shape. 
And since I'm spraying such a small amount, if I spray it too dark, it's not really a big deal because I could always erase it back out. I just sprayed in a tiny bit of the flesh tone underneath the lower eye so I have something to work with. Now I'm switching over to my eraser to pull out a few highlights, lighten some of the areas of the sclera, and then come down underneath the eye to pull out some of the highlights on that lower eyelid. With my transparent flesh tone, I want to start building up some of the values around the eye. So right here around the tear duct, I used um, my shield to help define a sharper line right underneath. And then from there, I'm going to try to get a smoother transition. So I'm going to use my eraser to blend some of it out, and then I'm going to switch over to using the airbrush freehand. Remember, when you spray freehand, you're always going to get a softer line. When you want something sharp and defined, you're going to need some sort of shield or mask to help cut that line between where the paint starts and where the paint stops. I'm putting up the basic formula that I used for my flesh tone. And remember, this flesh tone or any flesh tone is never set in stone. You can always adjust it. You know, if it's ever too red, you can add some of the complement to it. So if it's too red, you could add some green to it. If it looks too orange, you could add a drop or two of blue. You want to just kind of play around with it until you get a skin tone that you're comfortable with. So hopefully this flesh tone helps you out kind of steers you in the right direction of what you may want. I've noticed that when I mix a flesh tone, I generally mix it um, a little bit more on the red side, and then I use some green to knock it down to a more neutral color. So I always have it in that reddish orange shade, but if it's a little too warm for my liking, I'll cool it down with a few drops of green to, to help knock down some of that reddish. So for this area underneath the eye, I'm always looking back at my reference. I'm looking at what I see and then I'm trying to replicate it. Remember, this is a learning process. This is something I'm trying to learn about the subject that I'm drawing. Every eye is going to have similarities, but they're also going to have differences. So you have to get very good at observing to notice those little differences. And what I like to do is I like to spray some paint down, um, generally on the lighter side, and then work in some texture. Generally, I'll use um, my eraser first because that gives me a softer texture um, and then from there if I want the 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 highlights uh, brighter you know a little bit brighter than the uh, soft eraser I'll use my uh, razor or exacto blade and those are going to pull out very bright small specular highlights and that could look like sweat or very uh, sharp areas of light that are reflecting off of pores. Since my flesh tone is a transparent color, any of this texture that I pulled out can be sprayed right back over with that original flesh tone. That's going to darken it up and it's going to set those values down to be slightly less bright and it's going to make it look more natural. Because when you erase, or especially if you use a, a razor blade, you are removing paint right down to the substrate and the substrate here is gessoed white canvas so generally highlights are going to be very bright so just remember that when you pull out a highlight either with an eraser or an exacto blade you're generally going to want to use your transparent color your flesh tone in this case to help darken it back up again now the main reason you always want to spray a light amount of paint is because it's inevitable that we're going to always make mistakes. So when it's sprayed nice and light, it's very easy to erase. So if I see an area that um, looks a little off, I can just lighten it down with my eraser, knock the value back a little bit, and then readjust it by spraying over it. So just remember that. Always spray light, and then if you want to go dark, you build it up slowly. Now what I'm doing is adding in the eyelashes. Now. For me, I found the easiest way to do this is to use colored pencils. You can, of course, use your airbrush with shields, or you can use very thin script liner brushes and oil paint. Uh, it's really up to you what you want to use, but I found that colored pencils or oil-based colored pencils seem to work the best. So the colored pencil I'm using is Prismacolor Black. Now, while I'm drawing my eyelashes, I'm constantly looking back at my reference because a lot of times when we're drawing eyelashes, we line them up way too evenly where it almost looks like a picket fence. And if you study your reference or you look at anyone's eye, you'll notice that the eyelashes kind of come out in random areas. Of course, there is kind of a cadence to the way they're spaced, but there is some random randomness. It's not completely linear and lined up. Um, you know, the, the same distance between each one. So what you have to do here is you really have to pay attention to what you're seeing. 
I personally think it's so important to never fall into the idea that there's one single way to paint. Um, I'm sure you've seen many YouTube videos and everyone has their own opinion on what they think is right and what they think is wrong, the way you should paint, the way you shouldn't. And that's also what makes art so interesting and what makes it beautiful is because everyone has their own opinions on what they think is best and their own subjectivities. And it's up to you as the artist to decide which way you want to go with this, either conceptually or technically. From a conceptual standpoint, this painting has zero concept whatsoever, right? It's just copying a photograph that I found on Adobe Stock. But that's okay because this is about technique. This is about practicing and trying to improve your skills. So when I work on something that I, I do consider art, I've honed my skills and I can approach it with a bit more confidence because there's two sides to any type of art. There's concept, which is the idea and the message that you're trying to portray. And then the second part is technique, the way that you go about creating it, right? So with painting, if you want to get into advanced uh, portrait painting or, or, you know, advanced techniques, you have to practice. There's no way around that. So just remember, there's always two sides to any form of art, concept and technique. In this case, this one's all about technique and practicing improving skills to get better. So a few of these lines underneath the eye are too soft for my liking, so I'm using a shield to help define and sharpen them. Now, anytime I lay down paint, I always, like I said, try to put it down nice and light, but I'm always thinking that I'm gonna switch over to my eraser. So the airbrush and the eraser complement each other. First, you put down some paint, knowing that you're gonna come back in with an eraser and lighten it up, and it, you're generally when you erase you it's going to lighten up too light so you're going to have to spray back over it so you're just going to have to repeat those steps spray something erase into it and then spray back over it and with using transparent colors you'll get better with this at time and you'll understand how much paint you need to spray generally the key or the most important thing is always stay light as light as possible and darken it up slowly now like i said before these are just my opinions on the way that i think it's best to paint rules are helpful in the beginning um, certain things like you know always spray light they're helpful in the beginning to kind of steer you in the right direction but if you let those rules become a prison you're going to be trapped in them so just remember that take everything that I say or anyone else says, any teacher you have with a grain of salt and you know take from it what you can and experiment you have to try different things to figure out your favorite way of painting everyone's gonna have a different opinion on what works best for them or what they like what they think looks best so just play around you know jump around between different teachers and YouTube videos and decide what you like best because eventually you'll start coming out with better and better artwork and you'll start kind of focusing in on your own unique view so let's get into painting the eyebrows I'm using Createx illustration black thin down with a few drops of distilled water and what I'm trying to do is lay in my first few values of the hairs in the eyebrow so as I lay these down with the black paint I'm spraying them in freehand and what these are going to look like are softer hairs that are in the background we'll come in and add more detail later on but these soft ones help give us the shape of the eyebrow and add I guess a, a difference in the the type of line we're gonna have some sharp lines and some softer lines to help create a more realistic eyebrow if you watched my video on tips for painting realistic hair you'll know that one of the things that I kept talking about and stressing is that we want to try to add, add randomness into our hair when we paint it so one thing I talked about is trying to move quickly now what I mean by that is not to paint quickly you know still take your time while you're working on it but move your airbrush quickly try to get the lines in different places start and stop in different areas and move it around very fast this way it's going to help create some randomness and break up any sort of uniform look that may happen if you paint very slowly I'm holding my airbrush very close to the surface about a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch away and kind of varying the distance to get uh, different size lines in but this way 
when I'm very close to it, I'm going to get thin lines and I'm going to try to do the best I can to start and stop in different areas. And don't worry too much about making mistakes in hair. Like I could see a mistake up on the top where that hair is a bit too high. It's no big deal. We could come back in with an eraser or a razor blade and adjust it and fix little errors. So the first layer you put down is always your base. And then we work from there to adjust it to, to make it look the way we want it to. So when you're painting hair, there's basically two ways you're going about it, positive or negative. Positive, you're painting dark hairs over a light background. And negative, you're painting light hairs over a dark background. So here what we're doing is we're painting in each individual hair, each dark hair over that light background. So I'm using my eraser to help define each one of these hairs. Sometimes when using an airbrush, it's very difficult to pull out a lot of thin lines that have a random sequence to them. So what I like to do is I like to either use a very thin paintbrush or a colored pencil like what I'm doing right now. It's up to you to decide which way you like best. I've seen plenty of artists who can use an airbrush and pull out a lot of thin random lines. Um, but for me, I just find it easier to use a colored pencil. So here, this is a Prismacolor black colored pencil, and I'm drawing in quick lines, trying to move the pencil as quickly as I can to get a randomness to these hairs. Okay, so now we are switching back to our transparent flesh tone, and we're gonna start spraying in some values here. The nice thing about a transparent color is that I could spray right over the eyebrow and it, I don't have to worry about it changing its value, lightening it or darkening it. it. It's transparent so it's just gonna kind of blend right over it. So I'm holding my airbrush about six to ten inches away from the canvas and very slowly adding in some of this value. Now since this color is fully transparent we're gonna adjust the value meaning the darker the lightness by how much we spray down. If you look at this color right out of a bottle, it almost looks black. It's a very, very dark color. So what I'm doing is I'm starting on the left side and spraying in a very light amount to start getting a dark transition. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the eye that I painted in to use that as a guide to lay in my values. So I always want to go as light as I can first and build these up slowly. In this painting, I'm not using any sort of opaque color, so there's no white mixed in with any of the colors. So if I go too dark, I'm going to have to race into it and try to clean it up, and that's way too much work and just a pain to, to try to clean up. So I want to go lightly and then stop, look at it from maybe 10 feet or 15 feet away, and judge where I'm at and how much darker I need to go. While I love using transparent colors, they're extremely unforgiving. If you go too dark with, with the paint, it's, it's tough to try to fix it. You're going to have to switch to an opaque paint and spray over it, and then you get that blue-gray shift that comes in, which is a discussion for a whole other video. So when you're using transparent colors, you just have to go slow and build these values up, because if you go too dark, you're going to be in trouble. So now that I have some paint down on the canvas, I can start erasing into it to pull out some highlights. Now the nice thing about working on gessoed canvas is that you can basically soft erase your paint. So what I mean by that is you can control how much paint you remove by how much pressure you use on the eraser. This is a standard ink eraser and I like to erase in small circular motions. That helps pull out kind of an organic looking texture that represents skin and, and some of the pores and nuances involved in skin texture. Now when I want a very sharp specular highlight, which is a highlight that's reflecting the light source, I'm going to use my razor blade. This is obviously going to pull out a very thin line, but with a razor blade or an X-Acto blade, you can pull out all the paint and go right down to the surface, which is gessoed canvas, and get a pure white highlight. You could also see in this area, right above the lower eyelid, I used my X-Acto blade to pull out a nice thin highlight underneath the eye, so it looks like there's some moisture or some tears involved in the eye. So just by using this eraser, I was able to do two things. One, I was able to pull out the major highlight right below the uh, eyebrow there. And then I was also able to add in some of that skin texture. And it's surprising how much of a believable or realistic skin texture you can get just using an eraser and an airbrush. The key to it is just working slow and trying to use small circular motions to create a random pattern into it. Now I'm not going to do a full tutorial on this other eye because it's essentially the same thing and this video will end up being well over an hour and I want to keep it short since this is only the first part. Sticking with that one flesh tone is going to make the process easier because you're not having to jump around to different colors to try to get 
you know, warmer or cooler shades and shadows. You're just focusing on the, that one color and really just focusing on the value by how much you spray down to get it darker light. I will show in the next part of this video how I shift some of my shadows to be slightly cooler than the warm uh, highlighted areas. I basically use some black and spray it over it. That way the image doesn't look too monochromatic. But we'll save that for the next video and talk about it then. So I hope you learned something or picked up a few things in watching this one. Remember, just don't be hard on yourself when you're working on painting. You're always going to make mistakes. It's just part of the whole learning process and part of being an artist. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.